Coverage of the 2007 High School Basketball Championships on NET is brought to you in part by NPPD, always there when you need us. U.S. Bank provides businesses and consumers with a wide array of financial products and services backed by a five-star service guarantee. U.S. Bank, member FDIC. And by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska. The blues are good for you. We've seen one other game today where the two t participants had met twice before and split during the regular season. We have the same thing here. The third final and rubber match between Northeast Nebraska rivals Crofton and Norfolk Catholic. And now let's meet the players. Here's Doc Winnegar. Activities Association, its member schools and U.S. Bank Welcome to the Bob Devaney Sports Center for the 2007 Class C1 State Championship Game. Tonight's game features the Crofton High School Lady Warriors versus the Lady Knights of Norfolk Catholic High School. And now, let's meet the players and coaches competing in tonight's game. First, the non-starters for the visiting team, the Crofton Lady Warriors. Number three, Tara Harmeling. Number four, Katie Sage. Number 12, Maddie Larson. Number 20, Kristen Steffen. Number 22, Bridget Lancaster. Number 32, Molly Van Heek. And number 34, Brianna Winty. And now, the non-starters for the home team, the Norfolk Catholic Lady Knights. Number 10, Bailey Anderson. Number 12, Brianna Clayton. Number 20, Jessica Zaruba. Number 24, Kelly Beller. Number 34, Jessica Boyle. Number 44, Sarah Monte. And number 50, Kylie Frederick. And now, your starting lineup for the Crofton Lady Warriors. A 5'9", senior number five, Tierney Shoemaker. A 5'9", junior number 10, Nicole Van Heek. A 6'1", senior number 14, Ember Hagee. A 5'9", sophomore number 24, Caitlin Jones. And a 6'1", junior number 44, Morgan Wilkin. Head coach for Crofton is Aaron Losing, assisted by Tiffany Panning and Dwayne Shoemaker. And now, the starting lineup for the Norfolk Catholic Lady Knights. A 5'6", senior number 14, Rachel Verbicki. A 5'8", junior number 22, Nicole Brungard. A 5'7", senior number 32, Lisa Beller. A 6'0", senior number 40, Kayla Ewing. And a 5'10", junior number 42, Blair Schover. Head coach for the Lady Knights is Tim Kassmeyer, assisted by Lisa Anderson and Hillary Habrock. Tonight's game officials are Ryan Bajanski and Brad Dahl and Heath Molnarik. The bench official is Ryan Speck. And now, ladies, let's play basketball! These two teams hail from Northeast Nebraska and our district rivals 
Crofton, two-time defending state champions with wins over Fort Calhoun in 2005 and Ashland Greenwood last year. They've only lost once in the state of Nebraska, and it just so happens to be Norfolk Catholic that handed them that one defeat. And Norfolk Catholic has only lost once this year in the state of Nebraska. It just so happens to be that Crofton was the team that beat them. But while Crofton has recent success, Norfolk Catholic is the perennial bridesmaid, it almost seems like, in 2003 and 2004, lost a pair of heartbreaking decisions in this game. Last year, they didn't make it. Two years, or excuse me, yeah, in 2005, they didn't make it back to the finals. Last year, they didn't qualify for the state tournament. Now they're back, and they're more determined than ever to break the string and to climb that mountain and knock off their district rivals to do it. Should be a good game. These two teams know each other well, and they played very competitive games this season. John, you always like a good rubber match, and these two teams certainly know each other's tendencies. So this one's going to hit, hit a fevered pitch, I believe, tonight. The difference is, and, and, and they're playing in, the, in their third different facility. They played, I believe they played the game at Crofton in the regular season. He's either Crofton or Norfolk Catholic. The district final was up at Wayne Heist, or Wayne. Correct. This game here in the Devaney Center, so it's a different atmosphere. Still the same two teams. Here's a shot underneath, and Crofton on the scoreboard first. Caitlin Jones, the 5'9 sophomore, on that first possession. It's 2-0 in favor of the Warriors. And I love the matchup you're seeing right now. Uh, Amber Hagee, one of the best defenders in the state, is matched up against Nicole Brungart, who was sensational last night in their semifinal win, or for Catholic. Yeah, 28 points for Brungart. She really is a very talented basketball player. She's fun to watch. She, she knows how to create, and she is a very smart player. She makes everything go for Norfolk Catholic. But don't forget about Kayla Ewan, good post player underneath. And here's a drive. And another one of Norfolk Catholic's athletic players, Rachel Berbick, Rachel Berbicki, I beg your pardon, gives Norfolk Catholic their first two, and it's time. And the Devaney Center has awoken from its brief slumber. Yeah, the last game kind of took a little of the energy out, and that's going to be a travel. But the energy is definitely back. No doubt about it. Since the minute that tip went up. Well, they are they are rivals. They know each other well. And not only do they want to win a state championship, but they want to win a state championship by beating the other one. I mean, there's just something added to that. And we saw a little bit of that in the Class A game earlier today with with Bellevue West and Omaha West side, that the two teams know each other very well, and winning the state title is great, but to, to beat somebody that they have a healthy respect for, but a rivalry, we get a five second call, and Norfolk Catholic's gonna turn the ball back over, makes it just a little bit more special when you can do it against somebody that has caused you grief in the past. Adjustments will be very key in this ball game because you don't know what these coaches have in store. Obviously, it's not just going to be the same pattern that the previous two games have followed. I think both both coaches probably have a thing or two up their sleeve. So when those cards are played, you got to adjust. Amber Hagee took it in strong against Brungart, but no points. Near travel there. Look down low, and that was a block. Good block by Morgan Wilkin on Blair Schomer. Wilkin just standing her ground and going straight up. And Brungart, that was an incidental foul, but a foul nonetheless. She was losing her balance trying to switch back up and really didn't see Crofton's Morgan Wilkin standing there. It just fell into her. Yeah, her momentum just carried her right into Wilkin, just an incidental foul. First foul of the game, a look down low. There's Wilkin, posts up, but comes up shy. Here comes Brungart. Nice pounce pass from the baseline, and no. And Amber Heggie with the rebound. Heggie, 6-1, long, lanky, athletic. She's going to go to South Dakota on a track scholarship. She can jump like a antelope. Oh, that was close. You know, it looked like maybe Wilkin kind of leaned in a little bit with the body. She kind of separated herself for just a moment. But they're going to call the foul on the defensive side. And that foul, I believe, is going to go on Ewing. Nope, I beg your pardon. It's Blair Schomer. That's her first. 
Wilkins going to make us call her name all day long, isn't she? Yes, she is. She's Every great. single play, the ball's in her hands, or defensively, she's around the basketball. Yeah, really, you know, you look at these two teams, and they're pretty much evenly matched. I mean, there's really no major height advantage. The, re the real difference is in Heggie, who at 6-1 is the point. She gets the fight over that defense. Even though Brungart is not as big, she's very athletic, so that matchup in some ways can be a push. Because they bring different skills to the table or different advantages to the table. Ewing, she's shut off, now creates some space and throws up an air ball. And Wilkin gets the rebound. Four to two in favor of Crofton. Trying to become our second team to three-peat here tonight. Heggie and Brungart, they probably know every blemish on each other's face. <laughs> they played so much against each other and have been face to face on the and every, basketball And every floor. time they play each other, they're looking at each other the entire game. Yes, they are. Nearly thrown away. Nice save by Shoemaker. Wow, she went flying into the Norfolk Catholic bench and kept it alive. Though Crofton comes away with no points. Well, Brungard didn't have the numbers, but she still felt confident in that shot. A little off balance, but a nice kiss. 28 points last night in the win over Fairbury. A matchup that Norfolk Catholic really was worried about. They had not seen Fairbury this season. And and they really thought that Fairbury could give them a tough battle, and they did, but Norfolk Catholic had too much at the end. There'll be two shots for Heggie. You take a look at Aaron Losing, the head coach of Crofton. And that foul is the second on Brungard, so keep that in the back of your mind for a moment. Looks like she makes him out here on this whistle as we get some mass substitutions. And nope, Brungart stays in. She's got two fouls. A lot of confidence as you take a look at the play. Tim Kazmaier, the head coach of Norfolk Catholic. Brungart's a smart enough player. She'll know when to back off. And Heggie's a smart player. She'll know when to attack. Absolutely. So you just hope that you catch a break here one way or the other. 3.31 left to go in the first quarter of the C1 championship. Swing music has been called improvised celebration, but it grew out of desperately hard times. Listen to the songs and the stories of the Great Depression in a musical history, Hard Time Swing. Coming soon to NET1. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. Champions rely on strategy and talent. When challenged, performance must be strong. Goals must be clear. Commitment is everything. The Nebraska Public Power District applauds every contestant who practices with passion and fights for the win. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us. Together with your local public power utility. and out to a 6-4 lead here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. The opening period of the Class C1 championship game. Nicole Brunkard on the floor for Norfolk Catholic, right there at the top of the key with two fouls early in this game. She takes it up strong and she'll draw the foul and shoot two. And she cracks a little smile after that shot too. Very confident in her abilities to get the job done. Bridget Lancaster. 5'7", Junior with the foul. <laughs> Too strong on the free throw. Let's take a look at it again. It's almost, it's, this play seemed like Brungard just wanted to draw the foul. You know, if the ball was going to go in, it was going to go in, but it was more so. She had three defenders. Somebody's going to get a hack in there. And Brungard will come out after the free throw. So Lisa Bellar comes in. 
That name very familiar to Norfolk Catholic fans. The head coach of the very successful football team, Jeff Bellar. That's the sport that made the school famous. Mm -hmm. And now the girls basketball team wants to add a little bit to that legacy too. Outside the arc, it's Crofton. Up top, it's Molly Van Heek. They look down low for Hagee between defenders. Block on the first, foul on the second. Two shots coming up for Amber Hagee. Hard foul by Jessica Zaruba. Just trying to get a hand on the basketball. She had another one of her teammates kind of in the mix there as well. Hagee's fine. She went down kind of hard. Yeah, physically, she's not like a massive muscle, but she knows what to do. Just shows what kind of gamer she is. She's, I'm sure she's very well aware that, like you said, she's not a massive muscle. But she's not afraid to get in there and make something happen. And it's good. Eight five, our score, Crofton. By the way, uh, we nearly had some national history made here tonight. We'll explain here in just a second. We'll let Norfolk Catholic move the ball around here. Jessica Zaruba has it. This is Jessica Boyle. And now outside to Bellar. Bellar will take it in against Hagee, and Hagee got a hand on it. And swatted it out of bounds. Alliance, in making 27 of 28 free throws, came up one free throw short of tying the national record for most consecutive free throws made in a game. A national record. And if you missed it, they weren't just makes. I'll take over half of those were nothing but net. Yeah, if, if you had to, if, if you had the uh, Simon, Randy, and Paula judging, you would have had, <laughs> you, you would have had definite style points for an alliance. I can't imagine the national record holder, which I believe is Pueblo, Colorado. Pueblo, Colorado. I don't think they theirs had as much. I bet they used a lot more of the rim than Alliance did. That was that amazing. Game. And it was it was good to see the Crete fans even applauding that because everyone knew that they had not missed from the line. You think about that. 27 straight made free throws. Unbelievable. So one shy of a national record. But you know what? National record aside, they'll take the title. Absolutely. Eight to five our score. Crofton with the three-point lead. Here comes a drive by Jessica Zaruba. That's excellent, her first two. Excellent adjustment in the lane by Zaruba. Keep in mind now, Catholic playing without their leader on the floor, Nicole Brungart sitting down for a respite with two fouls. Trap, gotta be careful, get it away, wide open, down the floor, yes! Good body control too by Caitlin Jones because Kayla Ewing did get back on defense. She was just a little bit out of position. And look at Ewing, right back the other way with good little control of Making herself. up for the defensive mistake. 10 to nine, our score. Crofton leads by one. Final minute of play here in this C1 championship game. North Fork Catholic running a little zone. It's interesting, they were in man-to-man. -man. When Bumgart was on the floor, when she left, they were switched up to the zone. You know, Crofton is getting all, basically all of their points in the paint here as Ewing throws up a air ball long two. So Crofton really attacking the lane, really attacking the low blocks and getting their points down there. Probably settle for one final shot. Seven in the first seconds quarter. left. Harmelink. To Lancaster, one second left. Hagee, weak side, no. Good play though, really good play. They had the look, just no basket. First quarter's in the books. Crofton 12, Norfolk Catholic 9. This is the 2007 C1 Girls State Championship on 10-11 and NET. This is NET1. This program is brought to you by the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff. Soy biodiesel is a soy-based, clean-burning, renewable fuel that can be blended with petroleum diesel to reduce America's dependence on foreign oil. Soy biodiesel, making a difference for Nebraska's soybean farmers and you. 
programming on NET television is provided in part by Education Quest Foundation. For over 20 years, Education Quest has provided free college planning resources to help students search colleges, search for scholarships, complete financial aid applications, and learn more about student loans. Education Quest is located in Kearney, Lincoln, and Omaha. Appointments available at 800-666-3721. The second quarter has begun in the C1 championship game. Tara Harmelake pulls down the rebound for Crofton after the missed three. Here's Shoemaker. That might be, if my memory serves, about the furthest away from the basket. Crofton's been on a two here in this first half. They've really concentrated on attacking the paint. And there's a steal. Heggie outlets the break. Brungart got back quickly, though. Knocked it around, weak side, too strong. It was a great look by Hagee, though. That was just her glancing over her shoulder. She had the little uh, nice viewpoint to look over the defenders. Good dish, just couldn't finish. 14-9, Crofton leads by five here. Opening minute here in this second quarter. Brungart back in the game with her two fouls against Amber Hagee, a pair of All-Staters. Man, I really like that matchup, those two. That's a lot of fun to keep your eye on. That'd be fun to watch on one and one, you know, Absolutely. a little, little Michael Jordan, Larry Bird action. <laughs> <laughs> Referring to the Super Bowl commercial from a few years ago. Off the Raptors. Off the Raptors, off the sign, off the billboard. Nothing but net. 14-9, Crofton. I like the way this team works the ball around. It's interesting because Crofton, to me, seems like they can push the ball well, and they play very well when they're patient, if that makes sense. When they run in transition, they seem like they're very smart with their decisions, and then when they're in their half-court set, they know what they want to do. They can play at multiple paces. But that ball was a little thrown a little too high. There's a wraparound pass, and they'll call the tie-up. It'll be Crofton basketball. Wraparound pass, ill-advised, but trying to go between defenders. There were too many maroon jerseys sitting there. 14 to nine, Crofton. Crofton, six minutes left to go in the first half. Ewing nearly got a steal all by herself there. Gonna try to trap at half court. And that's a carry. Great defensive pressure by Norfolk Catholic. Yeah, Morgan, that's exactly what Norfolk Catholic wanted. They wanted Morgan Wilkin to have the ball in a position where she would have to dribble, and they forced that turnover. You get a sense that the Knights need a, not a big bucket, but a very solid bucket just to maybe get the crowd in a little bit. Brungart, air balls a three. Down the floor, Shoemaker lost it on the floor. Still loose, still loose, still loose. Somehow they keep it alive. Wow! How did they get it out of that mess? How did they get it out of that mess and then they threw it away? What a great effort by Shoemaker. 5.30 left first half. Dropped in by five and we're coming back. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. Success is achieved through commitment. Commitment is the hallmark of champions. Champions are those who never give up. The Nebraska Public Power District congratulates those individuals and teams who persevere. You are all champions. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. This program is supported by U.S. Bank, serving Nebraskans for more than 100 years with a wide array of financial products and services for businesses and individuals. U.S. Bank offers banking services at 57 branch offices in 15 Nebraska communities, at ATMs across the country through 24-hour telephone banking and online at usbank.com. U.S. Bank, member FDIC.
Norfolk Catholic had nine points at the end of the first quarter. They still have nine points. You just get a sense that the Knights are itching to crack that second quarter ice. Amber Heggie will check in at the next whistle, next buzzer, I should say, for Crofton. Here's Brungart, lost it. Just plain lost it. Traveling. Tried to get a little too aggressive. Running it up the floor. And the turnover against the Warriors gives the ball back to the Knights. 14 to nine. And stuck on that score, it seems like, for just a little while here. Five minutes to go. Entry pass was denied, and that's going to be a reach-in foul. Well, their last field goal came late in the first quarter. They've had a couple opportunities here in the second. Row. Morgan Wilkin. I'd like to see a few more picks be set for Brumgard. It seems like she's having to do a lot of the work on her own away from the basketball. Wilkin, that's her first foul. They'll go up top. See, Brumgard's on the bottom of your screen, just kind of making cuts on her own. Here she's looking to get around the screen. Great defensive stand here by the Warriors. Yeah, it is. And it's man-to-man, -man too. We're not cute about this defense. And that's difficult to do, to have a good defensive stand in man-to-man. -man. It's not an easy task, especially when you're playing a team with the talent of Norfolk Catholic. Now they do commit the foul here. And I think that's going to go on Caitlin Jones. No, it is on Morgan Wilkins. She just picked up her second. First free throw is up and good by Bear, Blair Schomer. We'll take a look at it again here. Yep. Wilkin was pretty close to being just straight up. Maybe got a little too much of the arm. Second foul shot on the way. Use a little bit of the rim on that one, but same result, and it's 14 to 11. Catholic again wants to trap at half court. Good job of getting it out of the corner. And now a drive through, and that's going to be a traveling call. Nicole Van Heek. Van Heek just got a tidbit ahead of herself. She saw the clear lane to the bucket. So Norfolk Catholic has turned up the defensive pressure here a little bit, and it's thrown Crofton out of their game. They're still up by three, but it's a wavering lead. Four minutes left to go here in the first half. Brungart. See, Brumgard just trying to take the ball inside, but cannot just because of the good defense by Hagee. So go down low to Blair Schomer. She's got teammates that can score, too. She's got four, and now it's a one-point game. Hagee's going to try to retaliate. Came up short just inside the free throw line. And so, Catholic with a chance to take the lead. Brungard takes it in and draws the foul. Hagee goes crashing to the floor. She commits her first foul. And Brungard got the better of that matchup. A nice run here by the Knights. Brungart with three points. Chance to give her team the lead. First she needs to tie it. And the best she's going to be able to do is tie it. Here it is again. So you're just attacking the bucket. She knows where it's at even though her eyes are not up on it. She's at least getting the defender on her hip to draw that foul. A 5-0 run here, and we're even at 14. This time they'll break the press with a long pass into the front court. Here comes Van Heek all the way in. Throws up a wild shot high off the glass. Ball ricochets around, and the basket's good, and count it. Caitlin Jones swung around to the high block. Almost as if she was throwing up a prayer. Yeah, she shot that from her shoulder, not from above her head, and somehow it crawled over the rim and got in. Three Low trajectory on that shot. Yeah, it was. 323 left here in this first half, and Crofton gets the lead back after the second foul of the game against Blair Schomer. That's number five against Norfolk Catholic. And here's Caitlin Jones to try to complete the three-point play. Well done by Jones. 17-14. to 14. Kayla Ewing, six-foot senior. 
Well, post up down low. She can find some room. Now backs out into the corner. So now she's back down underneath. And she's pushed from behind as she tried to get offensive positioning. Foul will be on Molly Van Heek. Ewing's a good looking player. I know she can definitely roam that baseline, but the thing that I like about her, she can play inside and she can definitely step back and hit that 17 foot jumper. She's gonna play volleyball at Nebraska Omaha. Ball coming our way. <laughs> 17 to 14, three minutes to go here in the first half. Boy, Amber Hagee just doesn't give Nicole Brungart much room at all. It's tough to beat Hagee off the dribble. Yeah, it is. From the baseline, yes. Kayla that, Ewing. That baseline J I was and just talking just about. just stolen away. But it's stolen right back. That ball was deflected off that pass, and Crofton got it right back. So back-to-back -back turnovers. And Crofton will bring it into the offensive end with a one-point lead. Good job to just slow it up and run a half-court set here for the Warriors. Had some problems scoring in the half court here in the second quarter. Have the Warriors. Did get that three point play a moment ago. Harmelink. Hagee's been quiet here in the second as well. She's uh, stuck on four points right now. I think she lost that ball and they're going to reach around for it. Tie up. And Norfolk Catholic will get it on the alternating possession. Rachel Verbicki was the one that would just stuck her hands in there and knocked it away from Hagee. We're going to have a timeout with two minutes and two seconds left in the first half. Coming back with more of the C1 championship after this. Programming on NET television is provided in part by Education Quest Foundation. For over 20 years, Education Quest has provided free college planning resources to help students search colleges, search for scholarships, complete financial aid applications, and learn more about student loans. Education Quest is located in Kearney, Lincoln, and Omaha. Appointments available at 800-666-3721. This program is brought to you by the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff. Soy biodiesel is a soy-based, clean-burning, renewable fuel that can be blended with petroleum diesel to reduce America's dependence on foreign oil. Soy biodiesel, making a difference for Nebraska's soybean farmers and you. It's the slimmest of margins. One point difference between Crofton and Norfolk Catholic in the C1 championship game. I'm John Bishop along with Kevin Suits and our sideline reporter tonight is Lance Schwartz and we want to send get well wishes out to our normal third member, Kyle D'Elia, who has been under the weather here for the last week or so. Couldn't be here with us tonight. Kyle, we know you're watching and we hope you get well soon, partner, and you can join us here next week for the boys' state tournament. And you know Kyle really loves these, the girls and boys' state yes, basketball tournament, so I'm sure it's just killing him not to be here. I bet it wasn't killing him not to be here in the last game. It was a little I bit of a route. The fifth. It was a little bit of a route. <laughs> yeah, but Kyle, get well, buddy. <laughs> you bet. Nice passing down the floor, but a good help defense rushing back to knock it out of bounds. And so Crofton tried to pass their way down the floor. Almost successful had it not been for the athleticism of this Knights bunch. In the corner, there's an open three. Yes! Tierney Shoemaker! Just coming off the screen on the baseline, got free, and give her just a little bit of a window, she's gonna hit that tray. 20 to 16, Crofton now with a four point edge. This is Jessica Zaruba. Fort Catholic's going to be content here for a moment. Not going to force the issue. By the way, Brungart off the floor at the moment. Up, down, nice move between defenders. Kayla Ewing. They'll run that press. Hagee, and a good pass across. 
Molly Van Heek, Hagee back down and... Well, that foul. Well, you know, the one thing you, you're impressed about with Amber Hege is that she is, always seems to be in control when she's got the ball. You don't usually see her make those mistakes like traveling or right. making errant passes. Just very much in control when she's got the ball. And I think that just comes with uh, experience. You know, she's a senior now, something like that. She could have easily been well out of control, but was poised, a little runner, nice kiss off the glass. You're just creating your own shot. That's all she's doing right there, was creating her own shot. But most other players at this level will, that's more of a prayer, but not for Hagee. Right. 22 to 18, final 20 seconds of the half. Ewing will pull up from 18. She can hit from the outside and just did there to make it a two-point game. Heggie, see what I mean by control? She almost could have traveled there but didn't. Layup missed. Here's the rebound, and there's not going to be a last shot. We're going to go to the locker room, and as you would expect between these two Northeast Nebraska rivals who have already split a series this year, we're going to go to the locker room, almost even Crofton with a slight two-point lead here at halftime of the Class C1 championship game, Crofton 22, Norfolk Catholic 20. And we've got halftime activities coming up in just a moment. But first, let's go down courtside to Lance Schwartz, who's with Warrior coach Aaron Losing. All right, thanks, John. Coach, what are you going to have to do in the second half to keep this lead and win yourself another state championship? You know, we're just going to have to keep uh, playing on the offensive end aggressive, try and get to the free throw line a little more if we can. Um, need to take care of the basketball because they really thrive off of turnovers. And then each and every half court possession of defense is important for us to do the job on that and to rebound the basketball after a missed shot. All right, thank you very much. Good luck in the second half. Thanks. All right, we are at halftime. North Fork Catholic trails Crofton 22 to 20. We'll be back right after this. Live coverage of the 2007 State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by the Nebraska Abstinence Education Program, working to prevent teenage pregnancy and the spread of sexually transmitted disease by promoting sexual abstinence until marriage. Where futures begin, community colleges, Central, Metro, Mid Plains, Northeast, Southeast, or Western Nebraska Community Colleges. NC Plus Hybrids and your local NC Plus dealer. The choice is yours, NC Plus. Hastings College, where you can pursue your passion. One Oak Energy Marketing. Natural gas from One Oak. Always a warm welcome. This is NET1. This is Terry Gross, the host of Fresh Air on NET Radio. I'll be speaking in Lincoln on April 10th at Pershing Auditorium. It's a benefit for NET Radio and Television. For tickets, call 402-441-7766. Hi, I'm Ken Burns. Public television has made a difference in my life for as long as I can remember. It's been the place, the best place, to celebrate the stories that unite us all, the stories of America. That's why I support PBS, and I hope you will too. Thank you. Next time on Nature. One. It's like a drug, you have to have it. From common carbon to super substance, the journey of the diamond. Diamonds are forever. Coming soon to NET1. I always tell people it's one of the most amazing wildlife experiences that they'll ever have. You can look up in the sky and every single square inch of the sky above you will have a crane in it. 
I've studied hundreds of species of birds, really, but just the thought of, of seeing the cranes in the spring, I can hardly wait. <laughs> Coming soon to NET1. The C1 All-State team includes a pair of players playing in the C1 championship game currently at halftime. Nicole Brungart and Kayla Ewing of Norfolk Catholic actually make it three because you cannot leave out Amber Hagee. You know, you look at that team and, you know, you've got a couple of players in Brungart and Hagee and Emma frost Briley. They can, they can run the point. Kara Anderson's a great post player. And uh, Kayla Ewing could play a good power forward position. That's a balanced lineup. That's a really good it. team right that there. That really is a good team. I wasn't looking at our list in that terms, but uh, you could certainly do that. I, you know, because sometimes, you know, when, when coaches vote on these teams, it's just pick the best five players. Correct. But it's almost as if the coaches realize, okay, let's slot somebody in here and let's slot somebody in here and slot somebody in here. They've, they've really put together a fine bunch. So there's a lot of good talent in C1 this year. And Nicole Brungart, Kayla Ewing, Emma frost Briley. Kara Anderson and Amber Heggie, all members of the coaches, all state teams. Congratulations to all who uh, made it again this year. And for Brungart and Heggie, it's uh, it's definitely not their first. 22 to 20, Crofton leads Norfolk Catholic at halftime. We'll come back and have a look at the numbers. And there's really not a lot of difference. Stay right there. What would you consider to be the worst investment you've ever made? The worst investment I ever made? Mm -hmm. How long do you have? Mm -hmm. The world's richest billionaires, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, give students advice on how to get a job, how to find success, and how to help change the world. Coming in March to NET1. Coming in April to NET1. Programming is provided in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska. Escalator or stairs? It may seem like an easy choice, but the hard truth is the illness and disease that result from inactivity cost about $76 billion a year to treat. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska, we believe that cost is much too high and not just in terms of money. So when it comes to keeping you healthy and keeping health care affordable, walking works. Your health, your choice. Coverage of the 2007 High School Basketball Championships on NET is brought to you in part by NPPD, always there when you need us. The Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nesoybeans.unl.edu. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. You know, I poured through these stats here at halftime trying to find a dramatic difference between these two teams. And in the words of Sergeant Schultz, I found nothing. So I'll just tell you that Kayla Ewing has eight points to lead Norfolk Catholic. Caitlin Jones and Tierney Shoemaker have seven each. Amber Hagee with six for the Warriors. Crofton leads at 22-20. And we're back getting ready for the second half of the C1 final right after this. Swing music has been called improvised celebration, but it grew out of desperately hard times. Listen to the songs and the stories of the Great Depression in a musical history, Hard Times Swing. Coming soon to NET1. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. 
Champions rely on strategy and talent. When challenged, performance must be strong. Goals must be clear. Commitment is everything. The Nebraska Public Power District applauds every contestant who practices with passion and fights for the win. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us. Together with your local public power utility. This program is supported by U.S. Bank, serving Nebraskans for more than 100 years with a wide array of financial products and services for businesses and individuals. U.S. Bank offers banking services at 57 branch offices in 15 Nebraska communities, at ATMs across the country through 24-hour telephone banking and online at usbank.com. U.S. Bank, member FDIC. Bob Devaney Sports Center and coach you find yourself down by two heading into the third quarter what was your main point of emphasis at the break we got to try to limit them on the offensive rebounds right now I believe they had seven points off the offensive rebounds so that's a big part of the lead right now that they have so if we can get that done that'll be big for us and then we got to keep taking the shots we're getting and be able to finish them all right thanks a lot good luck in the second half all right thank you all right we will return for what proves to be a doozy. 20 to 22, Crofton leads Norfolk Catholic. We'll be back right after this. On Nova, the U.S. invades Iraq with a new theory of war. Accomplishing the greatest effect with far less force. And the weapons of the future. Are the world's most sophisticated weapons winning the conflict? Battle plan under fire. Tuesday night at 7 central time on NET1. Ed Mapp grew up during the Depression. We were poor, but we didn't neglect the things that are important. I was fortunate enough to have givers in my community. So today, I support the things in which I believe. One such thing is public television. Ed included his public television station in his will. Consider joining the community of people who want public television to span generations. Invest in the future. NET and Nebraska. Television would like to invite you to the premiere of Crane Song, a beautiful high-definition program produced by NET Television about the habitat of the Nebraska Sandhill Cranes. This special night includes dinner and the screening of this remarkable program. Mark your calendars for Sunday, March 11th at 6 p.m. at the Interstate Holiday Inn in Grand Island. Tickets are $50 and benefits the NET Foundation. To reserve your seat, call 800-634-6788. <laughs> 22 to 20, the halftime score. We're about to begin the third period. Crofton with the edge by a bucket. You heard it from the coach, though. He thinks the main difference, offensive rebounds. Well, if you look at the offensive rebounds, Crofton has four, and they have been able to, as he mentioned, he scored, I believe they scored seven points. Yeah, it was second chance points, seven points for Crofton. So there is a little difference right there, but you know, I thought they did a good job in the second quarter to deny the opportunities that were there in the first quarter because a lot of those paints and point points came in the paint in that first period. They kind of collapsed a little bit harder on defense. Here's Norfolk Catholic to the line and one. I was just getting ready to say these next three minutes will be very important to today's outcome. I think whoever can get a good start out of the second half would get an edge, especially if it's Norfolk Catholic or if it's Crofton. Whoever gets to play ahead in the second half holds a very big advantage. There's a different mentality and philosophy you take when you know you have to play from behind. Missed the foul shot, and there's an unforced error. And momentum to boot. Right, Morgan Wilkin just flat threw it away. And there was no press put on that time. So Norfolk Catholic, even though they failed to convert the three-point play and get the lead, can take it right here on this possession. 
Rungart. She had a little bit of time to break it. Amber Heggy not only stole it from her, but then grabbed it out of the air. You don't see that very often. No, you don't. It's a great block. Just those long arms, that big wingspan. And because of that, she can shoot over the top of the defense. And adjust a little bit in the air. She went up straight and then had to adjust tilting to the right just a hair. She just knows what to do with the basketball when she has it. Has an innate ability to do that. Natural talent. Blair Schomer to Rachel Verbicki outside. Ewing. Ewing will drive in. And that's going to be a walk. Turnover against Norfolk Catholic. John, you know you hear coaches say a lot of times about players finding out, their, discovering their body. That may seem kind of like a strange term, yeah. but what they're trying to say is they understand what they can and cannot do, and they keep their limbs in the right spots at the right times. And this is exactly what you're talking about with Amber Hagee. She knows how to maneuver her body, create, and work in space. Wow, slam that against the backboard, and we got a foul. And off the dribble, you saw Hagee start that set by just off the dribble, the bounce pass. Got it down low, and now because of that, here's Caitlin Jones to shoot two. Remember, Jones had that big three-point play there in the second quarter that gave the Warriors a bit of an edge in the first half. You know, Jones has played above herself in terms of average in this state tournament. She averages seven. She's got eight points here today. She's averaged eight points through two tournament games, so she's been a big part of this Crofton attack. Four-point lead for the Warriors. Let's see what Catholic can do to respond. Brungard. A lot of times when Brungard gets the ball, she starts dribbling. It's like she wants to try to penetrate and make something happen, but she's shut down instantly by Hagee's defense. Tie up, Crofton basketball. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it seems like a lot of times, next time you see Nicole Brungart with the basketball, let's pay attention to what she does the first time it's in her hands. Does she dribble or does she look to pass? A lot of times she's looking to get to the basketball off the dribble, but she's just unable to. And I really can't recall too many times here tonight where off that first move she's been able to do anything. See, that's the thing. That's part of her, part of her game that makes her so good is she's able to penetrate. But not against this team. She has to find a new element. But there are, there are those times when you do penetrate that you get the defense to collapse, and then if you know where your teammates are, you can dish it and get points that way. So, But you got to get inside first to start dishing. That's right. Free throw is good by Nicole Van Heek, 5'9", junior. Makes it a five-point game. This match is the biggest lead, and now this is the biggest lead of the game for Crofton at 28-22. A three, off the bump, yes! Rachel Verbicki from the right corner. That's what you call an answer. Right when you say it's the biggest lead, it's like she's, you're in her ear and she comes up with a huge three. Oh, and this one is gonna be howled at Madison County. They are not happy about that call. Hagee, for one of the rare times tonight, looked like she might turn the ball over. And an over the back call. And sometimes when you're when you're good and you got the resume, you'll get a call or two. Tim Kassmeyer is upset. The fans are upset. They are howling over across the way. I think everybody knows how big that would have been if they would have gotten gotten that steal without the foul. 28-25. Charge. That one's. And that wasn't a makeup call. That was a fantastic charge taken by Bailey Anderson. Yep. It's a little, uh, little physicality, as Bill Callahan calls it, <laughs> here in this third quarter. <laughs> 28-25. Crofton in the maroon jerseys, Norfolk Catholic in the home whites. Looking for their first girls' state basketball championship. Here's Zaruba, pull-up jumper, and she airballed it. Missed everything. Oh, poked away. Rungard started that. Ball rolling out of bounds. 
And trying to save it, Jessica Zaruba flicked it out of bounds. Everybody getting hustle. on the floor. Good hustle. Everybody getting Catholic. after it. Even though Norfolk Catholic didn't get the ball there, their fans are on their feet. A lot of energy for the Knights right now. Over in the corner, it's Shoemaker. They'll look down low. Ewing rejects that out of bounds. We expected a close one tonight. We have not been disappointed mm -mm. so far. Just about as expected. Peggy to Harmelink. They'll look inside, and the tie-up is called. Norfolk Catholic has it on the alternating possession. This is an entirely different Norfolk Catholic team defensively right now. They're causing all kinds of headaches for Crofton. There was a brief spurt in the second quarter where they did the same thing and were down six, came back and tied it, and we're kind of seeing that same thing again. It's almost as if Tim Kassmeyer knows, okay, I need to turn the wick up just a little bit and get back to even. The problem is Crofton seems to find a way to get back out there in front. So let's see if they can make the climb all the way back up. As there's Brundart creating something for herself. And another tie up and Crofton will have it right back. So as two players come down with it simultaneously, it'll be Crofton basketball and here comes backcourt pressure. Look how poised Hagee is. She had a double team closing in on her and she's, just, she's okay with it. And they'll move it into the front court. Down low, she's fouled. How solid has Caitlin Jones been today? She's been really, really solid. You look at her, she's got nine points. She leads all scoring in this game. And again, we mentioned that she's above her average. She's averaging seven points. Looking to get double figures, and she does. She's doing a lot of the little things right. Just making things happen, creating, as you saw. Just get in the lane and make something happen. Back to a five-point lead with 4.30 to go here in the third quarter. Our final game of the night. Five champions crowned, one more to go. Ewing for 18. And the foul. I believe that might be Norfolk Catholic's first offensive rebound of the night. I can't recall a, a time where Norfolk Catholic got an offensive rebound and maybe got a second set. That's actually, it's actually their, it's their third. They had two in the first half. They were team seem, offensive seem, rebounds. Seem very sparse in, in no, terms of. They have been. They have been. No question. Thrown away. Well, as Jim Tenniper told us during our pregame interview, the attendance would be down this year because of the weather, and it is. Final attendance total for this weekend, 41,781. That's a, a little less than. 13,000 shy of where they were last year. And I know there were some accusations that the NSA tried to force the tournament in with bad weather because of money. But believe me, if they wanted to force something in because of money, they'd have busted all their rules and played on Sunday. So that argument really kind of gets blown to pieces. And we described, we talked all about that in our last game. So really no need to go back into that. Fact of the matter is, a lot of people could not travel just based sure. on the weather. If you got here Wednesday, you were here for the tournament. Well, it's what you know. It's winter, <laughs> and and how much tradition have we seen over the years in the girls' state tournament? Always seems like we get bad weather at least once a weekend. 32-25, Crofton. After the timeout, we'll be back. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. Success is achieved through commitment. Commitment is the hallmark of champions. Champions are those who never give up. The Nebraska Public Power District congratulates those individuals and teams who persevere. You are all champions. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. This program is supported by U.S. Bank, serving Nebraskans for more than 100 years with a wide array of financial products and services for businesses and individuals. U.S. Bank offers banking services at 57 branch offices in 15 Nebraska communities. 
at ATMs across the country through 24-hour telephone banking and online at usbank.com. U.S. Bank, member FDIC. Seven-point lead, the largest lead of the ball game for Crofton, 3.43 to go in the third quarter. Run guard, off the inbound, long three, short. Loose ball and another tie-up, Norfolk Catholics. So we've, I think that's the fourth tie-up we've had here in this quarter. Here's Aaron Losing, the head coach at Crofton, trying to win number three in a row. Been a lot of bodies on the floor here in this quarter. There's a nice pass off the inbound and right into the hands of Kayla Ewing, who sticks the jumper. Ewing has really good range, really good form on her jumpers. It seems like she's very comfortable from that 15 to 18 foot range. 32-27, Crofton by five. Brungart takes it away. Oh, she's short. An offensive rebound, and that's going to be a foul. Nicole a little frustrated with herself. That's usually something she does not miss on. But she's one of six from the floor right now. Yeah, you, there, there so were about a three or four. Frustration because of that too. There were about three or four of those she got to go in yesterday against Fairbury. That helps. Yes, it does. Nothing like draining a three that makes you feel a little bit better about your shot. And now it's down to a two-point game. So a five-point run here for a Catholic. Good to, see, good to see her come back with that three. Her previous three was pretty short. 32 to 30. Less than a minute ago, we were just saying it was at the largest lead. Now it's a two-point contest. Down low. No. Rebound, Brungart. She wants to run. All the way in. Nice feed. Tie game. Brungart to Zaruba. That was beautiful. She drew the defenders in. Kicked it across, tie ball game. And the Knight Faithful are making some noise now. A 7 nothing run after Crofton had started to seize control here. Let's take a look at that break again. That was nice. Great I think, pass. I think the light bulb has gone off with Brungart because all of a sudden over the last minute and a half, she's been a completely different player. Beautiful pass, as you just saw. She hit the three. Even though she didn't get that one layup to go in, go in she got the steal that set that whole sequence up. Well, it's, she struggled when her team's been setting up in their standard offense. So if you've noticed how she's gotten back into this action, it's been off a set inbounds play and off a steal that she created. So We'll see if this. that makes her a little more confident in the rest of her game. Ewing and Brungart have combined for just 17 points right now. Going into this, I expected a little bit more from them offensively. Still got a long ways to go, though. Oh, yeah, 32-32. And you know, one player we haven't really called here recently is Amber Heggie. Been quiet here in this third period. So let's see if she has something here. Shot up, no. Rebound put back, no. Foul, and we'll have two free throws. And to the line is Nicole Van Heek. That foul is already the sixth team foul here in this second half against Norfolk Catholic. Crofton has, been, Crofton has been solid from the stripe now, 12 of 14. The foul is on Jessica Boyle, that's her first. Second free throw, no good. And here comes Norfolk Catholic. They can take the lead here. And they haven't had the lead at all tonight. Checking in for Norfolk Catholic is Lisa Bellar. Norfolk Catholic looking for their first lead of the night. Here's Brungart. She was looking for a teammate at the baseline and there was no one there. Good idea, just a little too much in the way. There's a the travel. 
Crofton right now just looks a little bit out of sorts. They're a little rattled right now. And I think that all goes back to the fact that Norfolk Catholic came out with that strong defense to start this second half. And I think it's starting to wear on the Warriors just a little bit. Under 90 seconds left, Ewing for the lead. Offensive rebound. Seen a little bit more of those here in the second half. There's a drive to the basket. No. She goes to the deck. Zach Jessica Zaruba. Surprised there was no foul called on that. Now the officials in some ways are letting him play just a little bit, even though there have been a few fouls. And now Amber Heggie finally gets it back on the scoring charts. And Crofton goes back up by three with less than a minute left here in the third quarter. Ewing will take it in. That shot was just wild. He tried to create something that was difficult. A bit out of control. Foul over the back. That'll be number seven on Crofton, so we're gonna be shooting free throws the rest of the night. The foul is on Caitlin Jones, which is her first. And so to the free throw line goes Jessica Boyle. 5'7", junior. No points tonight. She'll get one more. Checking in for Crofton is number 32, Molly Van Heek. And Sarah Montag is scheduled to come in for the shooter, it would appear, as she awaits at the scorer's table. 35-33, Crofton with a two-point advantage. They have never trailed. That one barely drew iron. Now well, Crofton here may play for the last shot. Heggie looking to the baseline, finds a wide open teammate. Yes, Shoemaker had a shot, she had to take it. Hey, if you get an open look, you might as well take it. Now this is a big possession here because Crofton gets the arrow, the ball to start the fourth quarter. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Ewing. Just a one-on-one -on -one situation, make something happen. With one, this will count, no. We go to the fourth quarter. Crofton trying for the three-peat. Leads Norfolk Catholic 37 to 33. The fourth quarter is next on 10-11 and NET. This program is brought to you by the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff. Soy biodiesel is a soy-based, clean-burning, renewable fuel that can be blended with petroleum diesel to reduce America's dependence on foreign oil. Soy biodiesel making a difference for Nebraska's soybean farmers and you. Programming on NET television is provided in part by Education Quest Foundation. For over 20 years, Education Quest has provided free college planning resources to help students search colleges, search for scholarships, complete financial aid applications, and learn more about student loans. Education Quest is located in Kearney, Lincoln, and Omaha. Appointments available at 800-666-3721. eight minutes to play in the final Championship game of Championship Saturday. Crofton ball, as we mentioned before the break. They would have it to start this fourth quarter. Heggie. Shoemaker. And that one hit. No, it did not hit the top of the backboard. They let him keep playing. You gotta stop play after a whistle blows. Yes. Because some players may stop, some may continue, and uh, that's recipe for disaster. Yeah, I'm not sure what the whistle, I'm assuming the whistle was for the ball going over the top of the backboard or hitting the top of the backboard. Right. Just glad, glad that everybody got through that without any injury exactly. or any, any harm done. Good point. Or, worse yet, a cheap basket or something exactly. that shouldn't have happened because of an inadvertent whistle. The game's too close for something unfortunate like that to happen. All right, we're back to action with a four-point 
North Fort Catholic deficit. Turnaround, little spinner. And Crofton with the defensive rebound. North Fort Catholic has had opportunities to take the lead in this game, but has never led. We were tied for a small spell in that third period. There's a three. Yes! Kara Harmelink makes it a seven point game. Her first basket of the ball game came and at a good Hagee, time. Peggy blocks Brungart. And a foul. Brungart wanted to come back and hit a retaliation three real quick, but Amber Heggie got her fist in front of it. And who did they catch that foul on? It is on Amber Heggie, that's her second. It was after the shot was blocked, so Brungart goes to the line to shoot one and one. She'll get the second. Brungart tonight has eight points. She averages 15. She's averaged 24 over the course of this weekend. Crofton it in again does a good job against the press. They do. They, they, they get it in some uh, not so safe spots. They get it right around the timeline and they stop on the corners, but those skip passes have bailed them out a couple times. Well, in that time, Norfolk Catholic's defense bailed them out. Down five here. Rachel Verbicki shut off. And an errant pass, and Amber Hagee comes away with it for Crofton. Six little, minutes to go. A little miscommunication offensively for Norfolk Catholic. Boy, Brumgart's really trying to make something happen. Yes, she is. Hagee can set up for her two. No good. That'll be over the back. I think they're going to get that one on Jones, and that would be her second. Now, here's the good thing for the Knights. Yep. Something like that, they get to walk down, shoot a couple free throws, and no time is going to come off the clock. And they get to shoot. No, nope, still one and one. That was the ninth foul. Still one and one. Next one, though, will be 10 which means they'll be shooting two every time. So, I mean, that's an easy way to keep this game close. Potentially take the lead down the stretch if that opportunity would present itself. Lisa Bellar just scored her first point of the night. In and out, and almost got the offensive rebound, and touch last out of bounds by Crofton, so Norfolk Catholic keeps the ball. You know, it seems like every time Crofton does just that little spurt, Norfolk Catholic does a retaliation spurt, comes back and tightens it back up. It's just been an accordion all night long. 5.41 left to play. Crofton leads it by four. We're back. Hello, I'm Kim Todd. Join me and the Backyard Farmer team each week to find out what you can do to make your gardening easier. We'll have suggestions on landscaping, plant selection, and disease control, plus we'll answer your lawn and gardening questions. Coming in April to NET1. Coverage of the 2007 High School Basketball Championships on NET is brought to you in part by NPPD, always there when you need us. U.S. Bank provides businesses and consumers with a wide array of financial products and services backed by a five-star service guarantee. U.S. Bank, member FDIC. And by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska. The blues are good for you. Forty-two, thirty-six. The score: Crofton over Norfolk Catholic in the C1 Championship game. Five minutes, forty-one seconds to go. For for championship action, will come to a close. Here's Brungart, and one. I think she cracked a bit of a smile there. Morgan Wilkin with the foul. 
That's the 10th foul on Crofton, and just like that, Norfolk Catholic is within two with a chance to make it one right here. I think we know what Tim Kassmeyer said in that timeout. Nicole, get it to the hoop. Wow, Amber Hagee had to catch that ball behind her, and that was close to a turnover. Crofton leads by two. They always seem to have an answer for Norfolk Catholic's answer, and it's Hagee. And she tries to create something else, and there'll be a one and one shot here. So Crofton will go to the line. You know the thing is, John, Norfolk Catholic has just been nipping at Crofton's heels all night long, but Crofton has just, there's the half a step ahead on the scoreboard, that is. Makes you wonder how Crofton would respond if they were to fall behind. Absolutely. They have never trailed in this ball game. I mean, sure, if, even if you're only down one or two, but there's just a certain mentality knowing that your possessions become that much more important, especially as you head down the stretch. Now, hasn't happened yet, and if Hagee makes this free throw, it's guaranteed that they're not going to be behind now, at least on this next possession. It's a four-point game again. Free throws are going to be so crucial down this stretch here. Four-point ball game. Norfolk Catholic's going to be shooting the rest of the way out. Oh, it goes off of the hands of Rachel Verbicki. Good defense on that sideline. And again, that accordion effect. Every time it gets tight, Crofton pulls back on that squeeze box and just extends that lead. Right now it's four with a chance to go more than that as you look at Tim Kazmaier. He's trying to avoid another heartbreak here on Championship Saturday. Back-to-back runner-ups in 2003 and 2004. Knights fans were wanting a shove on Hagee. She was bringing the ball up the court. Shoemaker. Good job by Shoemaker, just keeping her dribble alive. Oh, there's an open three, wide open, no. Rebound Ewing of Norfolk Catholic. Big stop there for the Knights. Down low, wide open, Bellar, no! Or Boyle, I beg your pardon, Boyle. Forty-two to thirty-eight. Crofton just wanting to get a good look here. From the top of the key. Nope. And Ewing will bring it back down the other way for Norfolk Catholic. And Tim Kassmeyer wants a timeout. Four minutes and eight seconds left to play. Let's reset the uh, clock for you, Wheel. 4.08 to go. Each team has four timeouts left, so that's not really a factor. Crofton, as we have already told you, has 10 fouls, so Norfolk Catholic shooting two the rest of the way. Norfolk Catholic has seven fouls, so Crofton will have to shoot the one and one a couple of more times. And as far as foul trouble is concerned, really there's no one in any real danger. Rungard's playing out there with three, but no one in real danger of fouling out of this game. The Knights have the ball. The, a couple of recent possessions they have, one resulted in an unforced turnover, another uh, resulted in a uh, the missed opportunity down low right. for Norfolk Catholic. So they've had a couple chances here. Trying to stay nipping at the heels. Remember, last time they came out of a timeout, they had a good game plan, went right to Brumcart, and Brumcart took it to the hole. Crofton in a little 2-3 zone, maybe a 2-1-2. Two -two. Brumgart for three. Loose, who's gonna come up with it? Is she on the sidelines? Yes. Tara Harmelink came down with it, but ran out of real her body estate. Was, yep, part of her body was across the line. So Norfolk Catholic will keep the possession here. Yeah, the lane was open for a drive there. There's an offensive rebound. Brungart, yes, she gets the roll. It's down to a two-point deficit. This game, in many respects, is a microcosm of Norfolk Catholic's struggles here at the state tournament. So close, but they just can't finish the job. Now they've got an opportunity to do both. After the miss, here comes Brungart, all the way down the floor, but defenders. 
She'll go to the line to shoot two. Crofton fans wanted a charge, not gonna get it. That could have gone either way. Yeah, it could have. It was close. Aaron Losing thinks it should have gone his way. Of course, he's a coach. You bet. <laughs> so here's Nicole Brungart. One more and we're tied. Let's take a look. You be the judge. We'll let you play the official now. Well, Brungart, I, th I, I think the defender was falling back a little bit. She wasn't exactly set, so I'm going to have to agree with the official's call. And you don't always have to be set. You just have to have a solid charge. position. Right. But I don't know if she had that. I think she was leaning a bit too much, still trying to establish that position or maybe give way with Brumgart's momentum as she was going towards the hoop. So here we go. And it's a tie game. And now Milford Catholic, Brumgart to take it down. The feed, the shot. Milford Catholic takes their first lead of the night. Rachel Burbicki and a timeout for Aaron Losing. And now North Crofton will finally have to feel what it's like to be trailing in this game. And we're going to come back with the final 254 of this thrilling C1 final after this. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. Champions rely on strategy and talent. When challenged, performance must be strong. Goals must be clear. Commitment is everything. The Nebraska Public Power District applauds every contestant who practices with passion and fights for the win. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us. Together with your local public power utility. This program is supported by U.S. Bank, serving Nebraskans for more than 100 years with a wide array of financial products and services for businesses and individuals. U.S. Bank offers banking services at 57 branch offices in 15 Nebraska communities, at ATMs across the country through 24-hour telephone banking, and online at usbank.com. U.S. Bank, member FDIC. Off the Brumgart steal, Verbicki scores, and for the first time of the night, Norfolk Catholic is on top of Crofton, 44-42. Now, how will Crofton respond as we are getting late in the night? Heggy, the all-skater takes it in and will draw the foul. She'll go to the line to try to tie it up. No surprises there. The ball went exactly where I'm sure everybody in this building thought it was gonna go. So here's Heggy, she gets two. Short. Blair Schomer checks in for Tim Kassmeyer. Second one is good. She can't tie it, but she does make it a one point game. 43, 40, 44, 43. Zaruba to Ewing. You can just get a sense that so much emotion is in this ball game right now. The two teams with the history they have together and it being this close, it's more than just physical wear. There's a dangerous bounce pass, but Ewing comes away with it. Now Brungart. And a traveling call. Oh, wow. How about that? She knew it right after the mistake. She patted her chest and said, my bad. She knows. So now Crofton has a chance to take the lead. Down by one here. Wouldn't have expected anything less out of this one tonight, the way these two teams have played each other this season. Heggy wants that ball, and she travels the first time tonight. And Aaron Losen can't believe the call. Instantly, he was on his uh, on his microphone, so to say. His microphone that goes directly to the official's ear. Exactly, and he's going to burn a timeout here. 
Leaves him with a couple left. Norfolk Catholic still has four, so 92 seconds left. Norfolk Catholic with a one-point lead and the basketball. Back-to-back -back turnovers by two All-Staters late in the game. Strange didn't really place see for it to happen, but did it not really see that coming. We did see this one-point difference down the stretch coming. Right. I mean, this is what it's all about right here, John. Wouldn't have, wouldn't have wanted it any other way. So I guess we asked the same question here as we asked in the earlier game between Perkins County and Kearney Catholic, who's going to be the hero? And in that game, it turned out that it was one of the heroes. You got to remember, with about 90 seconds to go in that ball game, the two stars of the game had their biggest plays of the game. Here we go. And and there are the two our two stars right there. Brungart nearly lost it away on the dribble into the front court. Got to remember, Norfolk Catholic is in the double bonus right now. So if they, any kind of ticky tack foul, it's going to send them to the line for two. Oh, and she just Lane kicked it away, kicked it off her foot. Another turnover, Jessica Zaruba. And her teammates quickly said, You're all right. You know, they would have liked to have had a shot off there, but still. You're up by one. So now you're Crofton. You're down one. Is Hagen going to get the ball on this possession? She's got to touch it at some point in time. Here she is. Nope, to the baseline jumper. Too long. Missed by Jones. Here come the Knights. 45 seconds left. She stepped on the sideline. She stepped on the sideline. Just after, just before, what looked to be a foul. Well, it looked like that double team was closing in, and I'm sure she probably put her head up at the wrong time. She saw that second defender screaming right at her, caused the toe to go on the baseline. Now, what do you do here? You got 39 seconds left. Do you just play for the last shot? Absolutely Aaron, not. Aaron Losing's going to call the timeout. That leads me to believe that he's going to set up something here to hold the ball and maybe play for the last shot. What I'm going to do if I'm Aaron Rosen is I'm going to try to get off a shot with about 10 seconds left. Because if you get a shot off with 10 seconds left, the window is still open for that putback. And you got to remember, Crofton has been pretty solid on the offensive glass tonight. So don't count yourself out. Don't limit yourself just to one shot. Make sure if that shot is taken, that there is enough time that you can A, try to get a second shot off if you get the offensive rebound, or B, get a quick foul so there's still a window of opportunity that you can maybe get the ball back after free throws. Now, if I'm Norfolk Catholic, I'm going to keep doing the same thing I've been doing all second half, and that's keep putting pressure out. Don't let Crofton just stand out at the center and hold the ball. Come out, put some pressure on, maybe take a chance. Could it open the opportunity for Crofton to get a layup? Okay, maybe it could, but there should be plenty of time left for Norfolk Catholic to get a shot of their own. But I've got to play the defense that's gotten me to this point and has put me in position to win that elusive state championship. I that, don't let Crofton, I don't let Crofton bleed the whole clock here. That would be a championship effort. What has got you here is aggressive defense. Don't leave your championship effort. Let's see what they do. Go after it. So far, watch Hagee. Stolen away! Brungart came up with it! The baseline pass was stolen away! And now Nicole Brungart goes to the line to shoot two free throws. If she makes them both, it forces Crofton to make a three. Brumgart came down the lane. She was weak side help. She came flying down the lane. Watch where she is. She's going to slip right in with the steal. She's at the line now. The biggest free throws, perhaps, of her career right here. Not yet. Not yet. This one is big. Yeah, it is, because at least you want the two here. At least you want the two-point lead. And she got, got the it. second. And now Tim Kassmeyer's gonna call a timeout. That leaves him with three, so he's got plenty here. Crofton has one, so now it's a two-point game. And remember, 
Norfolk Catholic still has a foul to give for the one and one free throw. Just keep that in mind, not that they're necessarily going to try to foul somebody to put Crofton at the line, but if it does happen away from a shot, it would be a one and one. It would not be an automatic two. For those of you thinking Crofton go for the win here, uh, think again, they've only attempted three threes all game long. Not going to be the case. What I do expect, though, is maybe get the ball into Heggie on the high post because when they do do that, they've had success finding a baseline jumper. So it doesn't necessarily have to be Heggie taking the shot, just her having the ball in her hands. Remember, she's got that height and she can see over the defense. She could possibly set up one of her teammates for an open look. This is it. Here comes Crofton, 20 seconds left, trying for three in a row. They're down by two, 15 seconds left. Needs to find a teammate, 10. A look for Heggie with eight, off the glass, too strong, offensive board, no, but a foul! Oh, oh my! If that goes in, it's a three-point play opportunity for a chance at a win. Now it's pressure-packed free throws just to tie for Morgan Wilkin. And 5.7 remaining on the clock. And Wilkin has yet to score, and she is 0 for 2 from the line. And Norfolk Catholic will take the timeout. Wow, it doesn't get any more pressure-packed than that. Two free throws. I think that's what that lady's saying. Yeah. My goodness. What a frenzy here in the final minute. We knew it was coming. We just once that moment arrived, what was going to happen? Now, if you're Norfolk Catholic, the first thing you have to do is box out. You cannot lose by going into overtime. You can't lose in regulation if you end up in overtime. I know that sounds silly, but you've got to box out. If Crofton misses one, if you box you out, you have to box out. You cannot let Crofton get a cheap possession. To further your point, if you box out, you get the rebound and they foul you, you at least have two shots to make it a three-point ball game. Well, Which, remember, this is a two-shot situation here, so because it was in the act of shooting. Correct. But if that second foul shot misses, you've got to box out. The bottom line is, regardless of what happens this first shot, if you box out and get the rebound on the second shot, there's a good chance you can make it a three-point contest. Morgan Wilkin has not scored tonight. No. Now. Even if she makes it, even if she makes it, you're in a pinch here if you're Crofton. 5.7 seconds left. If she makes it, you almost have to foul right away. Instantly. Go for the steal and then foul. All right, it's a one-point game. Excellent substitution by Coach Losing. By doing that, it stopped the play. He lets his defense get set up. 45-44, Norfolk Catholic. She can run the baseline now. She can run the baseline. Zaruba has it. She's got to find someone. Gets it in. And a quick foul. Hagee and Brungart go crashing to the floor. Only a couple of tenths came off the clock, so Brungart gets to shoot two here. Either way, it's a one possession game. But Crofton has to traverse the length of the floor in five seconds. Can very and easily be three, done. And it can be, but remember, they're not the best three point shooting team around if it comes down to that. No. They might not need it. As of right now, you get that rebound. Well, they got a timeout. So you get the rebound, you call a quick timeout, and you can set something up. Well, now they're going to use their timeout here, so they're out of timeouts. So, right, what they're doing is, and actually this is setting smart, up right now. Because if she misses it, if she misses it, at least you've got the play. They, so they're going through two scenarios. What to do if she misses, what to do if she makes. I think regardless, two first, three second. 
Yeah, if, she, a, if she makes it, I, I really think you got to play for the tie based on the fact that you've only shot three threes all game long. Yeah, well, the problem is Norfolk Catholic is probably going to, well, they'll be t in tight defense. You almost, with five seconds left, you almost got to get the shot off that you can get off, regardless from where it is, inside or outside the arc. I don't know what they are going to be able to set up here in five seconds. We'll find out. Well, you can get the ball down the floor in an easy three seconds. Yeah. I, I don't want to say easy, but if you hustle, you can go the length of the floor and still get a good stop-and-pop look in three seconds. And you've got to believe that Norfolk Catholic's going to have everybody back. And, in fact, they're going to be under the basket. So they're not going to just retreat into half-court defense anticipating whatever Crofton might do. So they're <laughs> going to make Crofton burn clock just getting it into the front court, depending on what happens here. If she misses, the clock starts the minute somebody puts their fingers on on the rebound. Exactly. That's why you almost wonder about that timeout. But she makes it. Now it's a two-point game. And now Tim Kassmeyer is going to call timeout. He's got one left. So it's boiled down to this. A two will tie it and send us in overtime. A three will win it for Crofton. Anything short of that, Norfolk Catholic comes out of here with the big trophy. The one that they've been waiting for for a long, long time. And we told you that there is nothing more satisfying than not only winning that title, but beating a rival to do it. There's no other team they would rather be playing in this ball game. If they're to win a state championship, you can ask every Knights player they want to beat Crofton. Now, all you have to do is flash back to 2003. Norfolk Catholic was tied with Broken Bow with just seconds remaining. And Broken Bow got a game-winning three that was controversial. It would appear by the replays as if the shot didn't get off in time to beat the buzzer. But there is no instant replay in high school basketball. Even though we're here, there is no instant replay. Keep that in mind if there is a question between a three and a two, and if there's a question whether the shot got off in time. Here's the inbound to Hagee. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. Hagee needs to get it off. This is for the win! Yeah! Oh! It counts! It counts! It counts! It counts! Amber Hagee wins the state championship, and it's another devastating heartbreak for Norfolk Catholic. Unbelievable! Amber Hagee, the hero. Are you kidding me? As you just said, a three back a few years ago, deja vu now. For did she get it off Catholic. in time? I believe she did. I don't think there's any question here that she gets it off in time. Yep. It's very close. Oh, boy, that's about one-tenth, maybe two-tenths well, of a second. Maybe we have to look at it one more time to be sure, but I'm pretty sure she got it off in time. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if she had any time to spare. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. What an unbelievable. Here it is. Watch. Yes. It's out. It yes. was out in time. It is out in time. The shot is good. The shot is good. Unreal. We got to go to break. We need to reset. A dramatic game-winning shot by Amber Hagee in her final game has given Crofton a third straight Class C championship. What a night, and we're back after this. Coming in April to NET1. Oh, I hope you had a chance to see that finish. Amber Heggie, a three pointer. With one tenth of a second, she got the ball out of her fingertips with a tenth of a second left, and she banked it in to give Crofton a third straight state championship. 
Now it's time for our medal and award presentations. Here is Doc Winninger. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we are pleased to present the Sportsmanship Award for Class C1. We want to thank all schools, students, fans, players, and coaches for their ongoing efforts to improve sportsmanship at the state tournament and throughout the year. We would also like to thank Awards Unlimited and the Nebraska Independent College Foundation for sponsoring these awards. Making the presentation and representing the Nebraska Athletic Directors Association is Tom Ramsbottom of Elkhorn High School. Representing the Nebraska Coaches Association is Ron Kubik of Donovan Trumbull High School. And presenting the award and representing the Nebraska Independent College Foundation is Jack Pierce, NICF President. This year's Class C1 Sportsmanship Award is presented to Fairbury High School. Receiving the award is Athletic Director Kevin Zimmerman and students Kara Noble and Tracy Noble. Congratulations, Fairbury High School. And now, the Nebraska School Activities Association is pleased to present medals and trophies to both of these outstanding teams. The awards will be presented by NSAA Board of Control member Glenn Morgan of Neely Oakdale. He'll be assisted by U.S. Bank representative Jeff McCowan. First, here are the awards for the 2007 Class C1 runner-up from Norfolk Catholic High School. Well, head coach Tim Kassmeyer and your assistant step toward the middle of the court to present the silver medals to each member of your team. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number 10, Bailey Anderson. Number 12, Brianna Clayton. Number 20, Jessica Zaruba. Number 24, Callie Beller. Number 34, Jessica Boyle. Number 44, Sarah Monte. Number 50, Kylie Frederick. Number 14, Rachel Verbicki. Number 22, Nicole Brungard. Number 32, Lisa Belder. Number 40, Kayla Yui. Number 42, Blair Schomer. And now, all of you are welcome to receive the runner-up trophy for your school. Congratulations, Norfolk Catholic High School, 2007 Class C1 State Runner-Up. And now, to the champions from Crofton High School. First, head coach Aaron Losing, we have a special coaches award for you. And now coach, hand out the gold medals to your championship team members. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number three, Tara Parmalee. Number four, Katie Sage. Number 12, Maddie Larson. Number 20, Kristen Stephan. Number 22, Bridget Lancaster. Number 32, Molly Van Heek. Number 34, 
Brianna Wente. Number five, Tierney Shoemaker. Number 10, Nicole Van Hee. Number 14, Amber Hagee. Number 24, Caitlin Jones. Number 44, Morgan Wilkin. And now, all of you are welcome to receive the state championship trophy. Congratulations to the Warriors of Crofton High School, the 2007 Class C1 State Basketball Champions. I really don't know if there's anything that I can say that <laughs> will do this one justice. A tremendous ball game. A dream finish for Crofton. A dream finish to a career for Amber Heggie, who now is going to go on to South Dakota. It's a moment she will never forget. It is a moment that school will never forget. And sure, it's the third straight championship. They've won two others, but when you win it like that against a rival, it, it beats no other. And I have to say, I was watching Tim Kazmaier, the head coach at North Fork Catholic, how he is smiling after this game, I have no idea. I would be, I would be crushed and devastated. The man has a strong constitution, and he is down with our Lance Schwartz right now. Lance, take it away. Thanks, John. Coach, a crazy, crazy finish. Take us back, five seconds left, your team up by two. What was said in that huddle? We talked about trying to not let Amber get the ball at that time, and I thought we did a decent job of making it hard for her to get it up the floor. Obviously, she made a great shot. Uh, hats go off to her of making that shot at the end of the game. Uh, wish we could have taken a little better care of the basketball, get some shots, but you know, our team played really hard. I'm really proud of both teams that are out on the court. I, Thought it was an excellent effort. Great ball game for people to watch. He's back and forth all the time. Uh, but uh, you know, that's just part of life. One of those shots happened not go your way. I think we've I've seen that before in that situation. So I'm really proud of what my kids were able to accomplish and Crofton's kids. I thought it was just an excellent game. Your ladies turned in a, an amazing 24 and 2 season. How will this team be remembered? Oh, it is, ranks up there with one of my best. So uh, it'll be tough to replace this group of seniors that I had. Uh, I really enjoyed what they were able to do for us. Uh, just great leaders and uh, just a fun team to coach all year long. And we had great chemistry, so that makes the season even tougher to end maybe like this. But uh, I, I'm really proud of what our kids did. They laid it on the line. That's all I can ever ask. Absolutely. A valiant effort. Thank you very much, and congratulations on a great season. Thank you. All right. We will be back right after this for the final stats, and we will talk to the champions. I always tell people it's one of the most amazing wildlife experiences that they'll ever have. You can look up in the sky and every single square inch of the sky above you will have a crane in it. I've studied hundreds of species of birds really, but just the thought of, of seeing the cranes in the spring, I can hardly wait. <laughs> Coming soon to NET1. The headaches were changing my daily routine. Migraines caused Karen to see a neurologist who recommended a prescription. I didn't want the drugs, um, and that's when she said to start walking. And so I started walking, and I haven't had a headache since. I'm a lot healthier than I was, and I can accomplish a lot more because I feel better. I just let Blue Cross Blue Shield know that I was living proof that walking does work. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. The blues are good for you. Coverage of the 2007 High School Basketball Championships on NET is brought to you in part by NPPD, always there when you need us. The Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nesoybeans.unl.edu. And by Education Quest Foundation, 
improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. Crofton celebrates their third state championship in dramatic fashion. Amber Hagee with a three-point buzzer beater with her team down two. She banked it in. It was a legit three. She was behind the line, and as our replay shows, and I know we'll see it again here before we sign off, but she got it off with a tenth of a second left. It was out of her hands. And just again, another reminder, even E either way, there is no replay in high school basketball. So the officials, is, they made the call right away. They were off the floor, and there's no replay review. But none was necessary because it was a legitimate game-winning three. What a game. What a victory. What a career for Amber Hagee. Let's take a look at the final numbers. And uh, it pretty much stayed even for the game as we uh, thought it would. Points in the paint. Actually, Norfolk Catholic had uh, 10 more points in the paint than Crofton, which is a little surprising, considering uh, the way Crofton especially was playing that first half. But if you look at the final numbers, we asked at the end, are the stars going to come up? Who's going to be the star? Well, Nicole Brungart, 17 points in a runner-up effort for Norfolk Catholic, and Amber Heggie, 16 points, and the biggest three-point shot she'll ever have in her life. And with that, we go backstage to the championship area, and here again is Kevin. Thanks, John. Uh, head coach Aaron Losing of Crofton finally has taken a sigh of relief. What a wild sequence of events here to close out the Girls State Basketball Tournament. Crofton winning the final championship on championship Saturday. Talk about that uh, final shot by Amber Heggie. What was going through your mind, your reaction. Just talk us through uh, everything from your perspective. You know, I, we, we set up a, a play for her to get the ball and try and get as far as she could in five seconds. Um, you know, I, I thought we'd get it a little bit farther down the court in five seconds. North Fort Catholic did a good job of making her zigzag through, and the time went really fast. That's all I can remember thinking. I just thought, oh, my God, she's got to shoot it already. And luckily enough, we had all the girls on our bench counting it down. Amber must have heard them, rose up outside the line, and, and, and what, banked it in. You're pretty fast because when that went in, you sprinted on the floor and were the first one to Amber. Talk us through that moment. I don't remember <laughs> what happened. I just, uh, I mean, it was just a, a, a great moment for the whole community of Crofton to, uh, to see that happen. It was, it, was, it was a great, great thing to happen. Talk about three straight now. Where does this rank? Obviously, uh, with the thrilling finish, it's got to be at the top. Derek, should I even ask that question? You know, before I'm going to talk about Crofton, I, I first of all want to congratulate Norfolk Catholic on a great season. Um, we have a, a tremendous amount of respect for, for Coach Kazmaier and all their kids. Um, their kids are, are competitors. Their kids are, are great players, just talented group of players. And, you know, they, they, they got to be proud of their effort tonight. We are proud of the way that they played. And, you know, I guess Crofton, we, we talked about before the game what we had to do. And we did what we needed to do on the defensive end for the most part. Um, for the majority of the game, we kept the turnovers to a minimum. We had a little bit of trouble in the second half. But, uh, you know, it was, just, uh, it was just the girls' will, I guess, is what got us to a three-peat. And, you know, that's probably, probably the most special thing most of these girls are going to be a part of for, for a while anyway. That was a special way to end the year. What can you say about these girls and just the way they hung tough? Because this game was nip and tuck all the way through. They never broke. They just hung tough and, and played Crofton basketball. Yeah, that's... I think it, it, it tells a lot about the experience that we have. It tells a lot maybe that we've been here before. Um, you know, we, we go through a lot of end-of-the-game situations in practice, and uh, I guess they must have paid off tonight because we just did a great job there the last minute of forcing some turnovers, and, uh, and we made a play at the end. And the team that makes the, 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 the plays win the game. Aaron, congratulations to Class Act. What a great win for Crofton Thanks. in the C1 championship. Now, let's now move on to some of the players of the Crofton Warriors. Coming in first is Tara Harmelink. Tara, I got to get everybody's perspective of the Amber Hagee three, something that you guys, I'm sure, will um, never, ever forget. Uh, I thought she was going to hit the top of the backboard again, <laughs> which would have been really bad, but it was awesome. She always pulls us through whenever we need her, so 
What a sweet win, and, and especially to have this win against Norfolk Catholic, to be able to win the rubber match. What um, does that mean? Well, we're always rivals, so it's good to beat them, and then we have bragging rights over them. I don't know. If... That works. Tara, thank you so much. Congratulations. Up next is Morgan Wilkin with eight solid rebounds. A little pressure situation for Morgan late in the ballgame at the free throw line. But, hey, we don't even have to worry about that because Amber bailed you guys out. Well, not even bailing you out. She just hit the shot of the tournament. Your thoughts on that? That's huge. Amber always does stuff. I don't know how she does it, but she just comes out with it. What were you saying in the huddle there? You had the ball down by two, five seconds to go. What's coach saying? What are you guys saying to each other? Just what would we do if I made the free throws or if they made the free throws and what we were, what plays we were going to run, who we were going to get the ball to. And you were confident in everything and uh, just the moment that you guys all celebrated together on the floor, what was that like? That was unreal. I've never experienced a game quite like that. I don't think many people have. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank we you. appreciate it. Tierney Schumacher will join me next as the trophy gets handed off from one warrior to another. Three in a row for Crofton. Uh, compare this one to the other two. Um, no matter what, when you win a state title, it's unbelievable. I mean, the feeling you get is like nothing else. But this one definitely was probably a little bit more unexpected. So we were a little bit more excited, I think. So Why would you say this was unexpected? Um, I don't know. We all, I mean, we know five seconds was a long time. And we knew, the coach told us, you know, five seconds, you guys can do anything with that amount of time. Just get the ball in and get it down the court. And so I guess usually when <laughs> we won in the past, we've always had a little bit more of a lead so it was kind of unexpected because to make a shot like that at the end isn't very likely <laughs> were you guys on your heels a little bit because you you didn't trail until the fourth quarter did that kind of set you back just a bit um it might have just a little bit just because we know that in the past every time we play norfolk catholic if we get a lead they always come back we they get a lead we come back so when that was happening we're like okay deja vu this is happening again but no we were confident so Thank you so much. Yep. Congratulations. Up next will be sophomore forward Caitlin Jones. She'll be back for more as Crofton is well, going to look for a fourth in a row. Yeah, but so before, crying, we, but before we even get to that, the emotion in this game, it seemed to be running high from start to finish all the way through. Yeah, um, we were, just, were really big rivals with Norfolk Catholic, and they're a great team. And we just played our hearts out and stuff. So, yep. Do you guys have some jitters coming into this game? Because uh, you've been here before. The fact <laughs> of the matter is this game, you, you played a rival. Yeah. Um, it was definitely, we were nervous because the state championship game, but I thought we were all came out poised and stuff. Was it a long day? I mean, you guys played the latest game of all of them. Um, yeah, kind of. <laughs> it was well worth it, though. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate no it. All right, enough waiting, everybody. I, I'm sure people that are watching at home, they've been waiting for this young lady. Amber Heggie, five seconds to go, down by two. Talk me through everything that happened. Um, I don't know. We just had a... Coach just said, get the ball in and take it up court, get as far as you can and shoot something up there. So that's what I did, I guess. When you released the ball, what did you think? I, don't, I wasn't thinking at that point, but just I just remember when I saw it go in, it was just madness. It was, it, words can't describe. It was ridiculous. That is the final shot you will ever take in high school basketball. <laughs> to go out like that, not many people get to do that ever. So what does that mean? Uh, I, it means a lot. It's just all the memories you've made throughout the years. It's just great. It's great to go out like that, I guess. What can you say about this Crofton team and uh, the Crofton dynasty that you have helped build? <laughs> I don't know. I love them all. I guess hopefully we'll do the same thing for the next three years when I'm not here. I don't know. It was just awesome. All right. Yeah, Amber Heggie, the hero of the <laughs> Class C1 championship with the buzzer beater, the shot of the tournament. Crofton, three years in a row. The Class C1 girls basketball champions will be right back with more final thoughts. This is NET1. Hello, I'm Kim Todd. Join me and the Backyard Farmer team each week to find out what you can do to make your gardening easier. We'll have suggestions on landscaping, plant selection, and disease control, plus we'll answer your lawn and gardening questions. Coming in April to NET1.
Swing music has been called improvised celebration, but it grew out of desperately hard times. Listen to the songs and the stories of the Great Depression in a musical history, Hard Times Swing. Coming soon to NET1. Welcome back to the Winner's Circle at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Final thoughts here from the Bob Championship Saturday is in the books. Six very solid games, very well-played games all across the board. And uh, it's obvious they saved the best for last. You know, I didn't think we were going to get a whole lot better in those first three games because we had some really athletic, competitive, nip-and-tuck games through the first session. And even our, our, fifth, our th fourth game of the day was pretty good as well. And... And then you get to the end of this one, and we knew coming into today that Crofton and Norfolk Catholic were going to put on a good game. But how in the world do you top something like that? I don't know if you can. That's, that's one of the most exciting plays I've ever seen in this state tournament in the last 12 years. That's one of those highlight reels that's going to get played over and over and over because you look all across the board, across the nation, not many championship games are decided in that way. Now, I don't know about you guys, but Lance, when I play horse, I don't call bank. <laughs> she didn't call bank, did she? I didn't hear her, but as uh, she just said, she wasn't thinking a whole lot. She just let that baby fly, and good things happen. Well, apparently in the district final, she kind of let one go over the backboard, so this makes up for it. She must. She used the district final to get ready for this one, use that backboard to her advantage. All right, John, thanks so much. We'll see you next week for the boys' tournament. It's been a pleasure today. A lot of great girls' basketball, as you said, all throughout no the day. Uh, the, the quality of play this, this today. This weekend has been fantastic. Pressure's on the boys. they got to do better than this next week. The bar has been raised awfully high. John, thanks so much. You're Lance, uh, your thoughts? you got the sideline view all day long. Uh, just sum up the day from your perspective. Well, I thought that amazing Alliance free throw streak was going to top the day. And that was, that was like what I was going to remember this state tourney by until this game. That Crofton play at the end, that's, that's the kind of thing I'm going to remember for a long, long time. That was absolutely just fantastic. Your thoughts? You got a lot of interaction with the coaches throughout the day. What are your lasting impressions of that? I think the thing that sets us apart is just like every one of them. You can tell they really, really care about their kids. It isn't just basketball. Even as quick as I got to talk about them, you know, you could tell that these kids mean an awful lot. And so it was a, it was a great thrill to be able to talk to all these championship coaches today. Lance, it's been a lot of fun. Boys yeah. begin in five days, so well, let's do it. Let the pipes rest, and we'll get ready sure. to do it all over again. Thanks again for all of you that have joined us throughout the day here on 1011 and NET for the Girls State Championships on the basketball side. We also want to give a big shout out, big thank you to our production and engineering crews that have worked so hard over the past three days. Also to Dr. Jim Tenniper, Jim Angeli, and the Nebraska School Activities Association. They've been so friendly throughout the weekend, and we couldn't do what we do without their assistance. Also, Butch Hug and the staff at the Bob Devaney Sports Center that have been so kind over the past couple of days. Nebraska Educational Television, Husker Vision, and lastly, as we just documented moments ago, next week is the Boys Tournament Championship Saturday. Six games. Do it all over again. And as John Bishop says, they have a lot of work cut out for them as the girls raise the bar awfully high. From the Devaney Center, good night. Stay tuned for 1011 News. It's coming up next. Coverage of the 2007 State High School Basketball Championships has been brought to you in part by the Nebraska Federation of Catholic School Parents, State Farm Insurance, Nebraska's Independent Colleges, E10 Unleavened, One Oak Energy Marketing, the Nebraska Abstinence Education Program. Nebraska Community Colleges.